So you saw a video online about GPT-3. You were absolutely scared shitless, and now you want to know how it works. You've come to the right place. What GPT-3 tries to do is very simple. Given a set of words, it tries to predict the next word. That is essentially all it does. So you've seen people use GPT-3 as a chatbot. How do they do it if all GPT-3 does is predict the next word? Well, for example, take the question, how was your day today? If we give GPT-3 the question, how was your day today? It will output the next word. Let's assume that the next word is my. The first word within my day was great today. We then take the output of the word my and we feed it back into GPT-3. So now the input we give to GPT-3 is, how was your day today? Question mark my now gpt3 will output the next word which is day so we take this word day and we feed it back into the input so now we will give gpt3 how was your day today my day and then we do that again and we get was how was your day today my day was my day was great today All right and so this is how you produce more than one word from gpt3 even though it only gives one word so in theory, if you ask the question, it would answer. But in real life, that is not what actually happens. Let's find out why. Here I have an interface that I can use to communicate with GPT-3. It will automatically rerun the input into GPT-3 so that we can get multiple words from it. And it will stop once GPT-3 goes to the next line. So we'll get a one sentence answer. For example, what if we ask GPT-3, how was your day today? And we then tell GPT-3 to try to predict the next words. It will then predict, do you have any plans for the weekend? You see, this is not an answer to our question, but it is a very good prediction as to what would be the next words in the sentence, right? So we need a way to make GPT-3 understand that we want an answer and not a, co a continuation of the question. Here's how we do that. To do this, we need to provide an example to GPT-3. So let's give GPT-3 some examples as the input. Let's ask it the question, what is your favorite food? And then let's give an example answer. My favorite food is sushi. What books have you read recently? I have read Frankenstein. Now that we've given it these example questions and answers, we can ask it the real question we've been meaning to ask, which is, how was your day today? How was your day today? Now we'll feed that to the AI and we'll see that it gives us this answer. It was a good day today. I slept a lot, which is exactly what we want. Now let's cover some of GPT-3's limitations. So for this info, entire video, I've been saying that GPT-3 takes input and output measured in terms of words. This isn't true. It's actually measured in terms of tokens. And what a token is, it's a fragment of a word. So it's like about four characters. And so there can be multiple tokens per word. So if we had the word Descartes and we that into tokens you would have one token called for desk and one for art and one for es and so you have these three tokens that make up this long words then when there are more common words like the or his these words are stored as one token so very common words are more efficiently stored with their tokens and so gpt3 can take in a sum a summation of input and output of 2048 tokens which is about 1500 words depending on the contents of what you're giving it and so this is a big problem with gpt3 because it's one of the reasons why it can the only thing it can remember other than the things it has learned through training are the things that are given to it as input and so it's limited to 1500 words so you'll never have GPT-3, you know, writing a massive code base 
Not that it would even be able to if it could take more input, but that's just not possible. Also, another issue with GPT-3 is its cost and its speed. To try to solve these limitations, OpenAI has implemented different models of GPT-3. Each model is a slightly modified version of GPT-3 that has its own specific strengths. So there's four models. There's Da Vinci, Curry, Babbage, and Ada. Da Vinci is the best model. It's the one that I briefly showed you. It's the most expensive and the slowest one, but it produces the output of highest quality. Then there's the Curry engine, which is 10 times cheaper than the Da Vinci engine and has almost no cost in quality and it's slightly faster. Then there's also the Ada engine, which is much, much faster. And um, it's the fastest one of them all and it's also very cheap. Now that you've watched this video, you might be very interested in GPT-3. And getting access to the GPT-3 API is pretty hard. Um, as of right now, it's not released to the public, which means that people can test it, but only those with an API key. To get an API key, you have to either go on their website and fill out a form, which you will see to join the waitlist, and you have to explain the application that you want. This actually didn't work for me, and I, wa I instead sent an email to one of the people at GPT-3 um, explaining to them why I wanted access to GPT-3 and what were some applications that I was going to work on if they were to give me access. And um, I provided some pretty good and unique uses and this is why they gave me access. I'm going to put a link down in the description uh, to a video which actually showed me how to get access to their API and I just followed this guy's advice and it got me access to the API. So good luck to you and in the next video we will be actually using GPT-3.